Welcome to Digital World. At this point of time, you understand what is VLSI and how we design the chips. Great. Now, it's time for you to understand the basics of logic design and prepare yourself to explore all the major steps that we follow as part of front-end design flow. Design architecture, RTL coding, simulation, and synthesis. That's what actually you're going to explore as part of this online design methodology course. So, in this video, I'm going to explain what is digital electronics and why it is so important for anyone who is passionate of learning VLSI technology. Also, I will show you how you are going to learn the concept step by step in the next few weeks. Trust me, you will really enjoy this journey and you will feel so happy about understanding the crux of logic design at the end of this training course. Now let's move on. This is our proprietary material. Please read this note. Why digital electronics? I will show you how we design electronic products like laptops and tablets. So you'd be convinced with the fact that digital is everything in BLSI. That's fine. Still, you have this big question in your mind. Why digital is so important? I have already completed digital module as part of my curriculum. Now I am aware of all the basics. Why should I take up this module? If you feel so, I would like to ask few questions. Try to answer me. If you look at the chip, it understands only binary. Then why should we deal with other number systems like hexadecimal and octal? Fundamentally, if you look at chips can be classified into NAND based chips or NOR based chips. NAND and NOR, they are universal gates. Do you know the difference between NAND based and NOR based chips? Or if someone gives you the waveform, can you design the circuit? Or can you tell me exactly when do we go for finite state machine design? Why can't we design everything using gates and flip-flops? Or what is the fundamental difference between latch and flip-flop? What do you mean by register transfer level design? If I ask you all these questions, I'm sure you would be able to give me some big answers, but still you are very theoretical. That's what I'm trying to address through this online course. You are going to learn digital for design, which means how we apply all these basics and design complex chips in the industry. For example, to understand the difference between sum of products and product of sum, you need to understand the difference between NAND based chips and NOR based chips. Fundamentally, how they are different in terms of CMOS layout structure. Also, you need to understand the difference between positive logic and negative logic. If you refer any textbooks, they explain all these concepts like bits and pieces as part of different chapters, but no one has taken any effort to connect all these pieces and explain the concept why we go for different approaches to design the same circuit. That's what you really need to understand to become a chip designer. And that's what I'm going to teach as part of this digital electronics module. A digital revolution. Look at here how digital has transformed our life. Can you imagine your life without these gadgets? Cell phone, the kind of animations you enjoy, music systems, or the kind of automation you enjoy while driving your car. Now you are using your laptop and watching my video. You are learning digital directly from me. Virtually it's like one-on-one -on -one coaching it doesn't even happen in my finishing school where we train uh, the engineers extensively on VLSI design flow and deploy them directly in the industry. But this online training empowered me to teach passionate engineers like you and connect with them. Now we know each other, we are connected. This is possible because of internet. Now this internet has become more powerful as IoT. So this internet itself is created through 
VLSI. We have designed various kinds of chips and connected various kinds of networks like bands and LANs. That's how we have built internet. And that's the reason today we are enjoying this online course. We are interacting through internet. So the complete world is pretty much digital. All right. Now, I would like to show you how we design electronic products like laptops. The motherboard which is inside laptop does everything. This motherboard has processor on it. This processor is connected with various peripherals like hard disk, Ethernet port and HDMI port. But this is how basically the whole motherboard works. Now, if you look at the processor, it's realized through digital. But this is the architecture of processor and this kind of processor will have various kinds of digital components like arithmetic logic unit, or some kind of memory, some kind of timers, or some kind of controllers, and all these components will be connected through on-chip bus. This is how basically we realize the chip. Now, if you look at the whole flow, the chip will have various kinds of IPs, pretty much digital IPs, and there may be few analog IPs, and all these IPs will be connected through on-chip bus. Now, in digital, what actually you do is you understand this part, how we use different kinds of gates, pretty much universal gates and flip-flops to design this kind of digital IP. You design various kinds of chips, applying digital electronics, and you put all the IPs together, you integrate all the IPs, and you create the complete chip, and then you share the netlist with the foundry, and the foundry fabricates the chip. If you look at the actual silicon, the silicon is going to have only transistors like this. This is how we design chip. Now, this is the big piece. You really need to understand digital electronics. What is universal gate? And how to create NAND based or not based chips. That's what actually you're going to explore as part of digital electronics. You want to design a chip, you really need to understand what is architecture. You take any architecture, it will have standard digital components like arithmetic logic unit, there will be some combinational logic, there will be some sequential logic, there will be some kind of controllers, and all these components will be connected through on chip bus like this. Look at here, right? This is how you design IP. And the chip is going to have various IPs like this. As part of digital, we deal with only digital stuff, but if you look at the chip, it may have some kind of analog IPs also, right? This is how we integrate all the IPs and realize the chip. So the basic thing that you need to understand is how we design IP, how we design the architecture using various digital building blocks. As part of this course, I'm going to teach you the concept of combinational circuits, various building blocks like gates, adders, subtractors, encoders, decoders, multiplexers. Then I will walk you through the concepts of sequential circuits like flip-flops, latches, registers, and counters. After learning combinational circuits and sequential circuits, you'll be able to understand finite state machine and memories. Now, I would like to explain how this training is going to happen. I will explain all the concepts showing different kinds of examples. And there will be quiz at the end of every chapter. I want you to take up all the quiz. This will help you to understand the concepts clearly and sometimes they will also clarify your doubts indirectly. And there will be assignments for every chapter. And you can also refer the solution videos to understand the assignment problems. So there are various kinds of problems. I want you to take up the assignment seriously and solve all kinds of problems because practice makes you perfect. So finally, I would like to share this with you. Practice in such a way that you will never forget these concepts in your life. It's very important. Look at me, I am a CEO. 
though I am responsible for company's vision and business, but still I live my life as hands-on engineer. When I was working in industry, they recognized my ability in applying the basics when it comes to doing big things like system very log programming or architecting the test bench or creating the verification plan. That gave me a lot of confidence. With that confidence, I quit my job and started my own company. And still, I live my life as hands-on engineer. Still, I'm looking for every new opportunity to learn something new and refresh my basics. Now, if you look at, I'm hiring a lot of engineers for my product company, ASIC Design Technologies. We have more than 50 verification engineers working on different kinds of projects, customer projects and internal projects. This is my experience. Most of the verification engineers, they work like software engineers. They are not good at digital, but still they are extremely good at writing system very log program or, or using methodologies like UVM. But it doesn't work. Look at the reality. While running simulation, you have to debug the simulation failures. If you don't really understand how you can design finite state machine, then how are you going to debug the finite state machine which has issues? There could be some deadlock condition or some state transition might not work properly or you don't understand the basic difference between melee machine and more machine. The other big issue is you don't know how to communicate the design issues with the designer. You don't know how to communicate and convince the designer. When you say there is an issue in the chip, the designer is not going to accept immediately. It starts from the uh, simulation failure. You have to open the waveform and show him that you look at here, there is a mismatch. Go back to the source code and show him exactly like this is the FSM which creates this kind of issue. What is the problem with the coding style? When you explain like this, the designer should be able to accept your point. This is the biggest challenge for the verification engineer. To become a verification engineer, you have to be really, really good at design. That's why digital is so important. Please keep it in your mind. Without understanding digital, there is no point of learning any programming language like Verilog or System Verilog. It's not going to work. While writing program, basically what you do is you try to realize the architecture which you created. If the architecture itself is not proper, then how the program is going to work. Think about it. You have to learn all the basics of digital electronics initially as part of this module. And then I will take you to Verilog programming. There we are going to apply all these concepts and then write various kinds of programs. There you are going to understand programming concepts, coding style and synthesizable subset. And with this combination, digital plus Verilog, you would be able to understand the next big thing, system Verilog and UVM later in the future. All the best. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video.